Hey and welcome to Glittering the Coast. My name is Angela and today we're going to work on a flamingo cup with a water slide. It's pretty easy to do and I'm super excited to show you how to use it. So today I'm going to be using my gloves. I've got some really pretty glitters and I have a popsicle stick with my epoxy and I'm going to tell you about the glitters in just a minute. So with my epoxy you have to measure it one to one. It is by KS Resin Liquidy Split. And I like to use the epoxy method whenever I put the glitter onto the cup. So what I do as I measure just for um, adding the epoxy on to the cup to add the glitter on top, I measure 2.5 milliliters of part A to 2.5 milliliters of part B. Now in the description, I have a code that you can save 5% on this epoxy brand. So if you're looking for something new to try, give this one a try. It is amazing. Now this is sped up a little bit, um, but what I do is I make sure that this epoxy is thoroughly combined before I even try to attempt to put it onto my cup. So I've got this cup spray painted kind of like an ombre and I want to make sure that I've got the epoxy smoothed over the cup. The cup was dried between an hour to 24 hours. It just depends on how fast the cup dries and what kind of time that I have. So you're definitely not going to use the whole five milliliters of epoxy for the cup. And just kind of take it, smooth it over. I like having the glare of the light on the epoxy because I can see if I have missed any spots. So you want to make sure that it is thoroughly covered with epoxy. I'm patting it down just to kind of see what I've missed. You definitely want to do this with a latex or nitrile glove <clears throat> if you're allergic to latex. Now this first glitter is gorgeous. It is by my friend's glitter company KCC Glitter and that one is called Unicorn Dreams. It is a little bit chunkier than a fine glitter, but it is still considered, in my opinion, a fine glitter. So I like starting off with the lighter color in the middle, trying to do an ombre effect. So you see me tipping my cup up and down, trying to let the glitter naturally cascade over the white part of the cup. This glitter has somewhat of a purple to a pink opalescent shift to it, but the white part of it itself is absolutely beautiful. It is so shimmery, so if you're looking for white glitter, you can use the link in my description and you can find that one also. That was called Unicorn Dreams. Now the next two are by BJ's Glitter. They are first glitter company that I started off with and those glitters, these two colors right here that I'm about to use, they're my absolute favorite colors ever. This one is a chunky one and it is actually called Flamingo. It is so pretty. It is like a good combination of like a really nice bright pink color, kind of hot pink, but also kind of a little bit of a coral in it. And it's uh, somewhat color shifting from like that pink to the gold. Um, not too gold, but enough to give it a nice shimmer to it. So if you're looking for a really pretty, corally, bright pink color, this is going to be the one for you. So I'm kind of going back in here, doing a little bit of an ombre on this and um, trying, I left a little bit of that epoxy open and I didn't get the white part, white glitter onto it because I wanted to add a little bit of that coral flamingo color on it. I'm going around the room trying to lay down some glitter so I don't have to do a whole lot of work whenever it's time to sand. With the next glitter color, it is also by BJ's Glitter and I'll link it in the description. It's called Bedrock and it is a fine glitter. I have noticed that if I do a chunky glitter on the bottom and around the sides of the bottom, I get a really, I spend so much time sanding the cup. So if you're having a hard time with the bottom or the edges around the rim, go in with the same color in a fine color if you're able to find it. So I'm just filling in any little gaps and little pieces that the chunky glitter may not have covered. I go in kind of at the 45 and 
the 45 degree angle and tried to make it um, where uh, we're on brain. Okay, so this is a fine sieve and I've got chunky glitter and my fine glitter and so I'm just making sure that I get all the chunky out. I'll link that in my description too. It's really helpful if you're having a problem having your chunky glitter get into your fine glitters. So now that I've got my tumbler completely glittered, I'm taking my parchment paper and wrapping it around. Make sure you cut enough so that you can get the whole cup into the parchment paper. It helps to lay down the chunky glitter and then going around making sure that everything else is laying down as best as it can, trying to get the excess off of the rim. And this is why I like to spray paint my tumblers somewhat similar to the actual color of the tumbler. In case any glitter comes off, uh, you're not going to see stainless steel. You're going to actually see just the paint underneath it. So with my epoxy, I'm going in with, let's see, this one is a 20 ounce tumbler. So I'm going in with 20 to 30 ounces of epoxy. And probably, um, I'm trying to think of what I did here, probably 20 ounces, but I would recommend 30 ounces, especially if you're new and working with chunky glitter. Um, before this step, I took it outside and I spray painted it with clear. That way my epoxy kind of didn't sink into the glitter, but it gives it, um, it makes it so that my epoxy doesn't move. So I've got 20 ounces of my KS resin liquidy split and I'm stirring it. Usually it takes between two to four minutes depending on how warm my room is. And we want to make sure that we stir it completely. Um, I do kind of stir it quickly, but I have learned how to use this resin and it's my favorite one to use. So I know how to work with it. With the gloves on for this first application, I usually wear a glove and I'm going in over the white first because I really don't want any of that pink to transfer into my white at the moment. Once that's completely covered, I'll go up to the top, add my epoxy, get it as smooth as I can, making sure that there's no bubbles. And if I have any glitter that's sticking up after I put this on, I'll try to lay it down if I can. Then after this part, I will move myself right on down to the bottom part and on the bottom of the tumbler. Get your epoxy as smooth as you can. If there's any bubbles, we're gonna go in with a blowtorch, so it's, it's no big deal, so just do your best here. I'm still staying away from the white part of the glitter at this moment. I'm just trying to get the epoxy fully covered onto this tumbler right here on this pink part. Then I'll move down to the bottom, and then I will uh, continue up the cup if I need to, if I have any missing spots. Make sure whenever you do the bottom, you're doing really thin sections so that at the end, you don't have a fat bottom and the tumbler won't be wobbly whenever you're setting it down on your table. This torch is just a kitchen torch. It's linked in my description. You don't want to burn your epoxy. You kind of stay off of the epoxy, but this is to make sure that any micro bubbles that we have that didn't pop upon application, they get popped with the heat. And I recommend that over a heat gun any day. The heat gun will move your epoxy, the blowtorch will just pop bubbles. So I didn't really like my ombre. It didn't ombre enough for me, so I'm going in with some chunky glitter right where the peach and the white colors mix together. And just putting a little bit more pieces there I think this total time of me putting epoxy on and going in with this extra glitter and moving the glitter around to where I wanted it um, took me about 15 minutes total. So I put my finger caught on there and, and I moved my glitter around to where I wanted it. So we're going in for a second coat of epoxy. Usually the KS resin for me in the room that I'm mixing in it takes about about four hours before I want to add another coat of epoxy on, um, but I definitely add two coats of epoxy before I sand any of my tumblers. It was bouncing on me there, so I needed to make sure <laughs> that it stopped bouncing so much. 
but you want to make sure that your cups are on your turner on your turner and that they're level if they're not level you're going to get a lip of epoxy at the top or at the bottom and it's just not going to look very good so make sure that your cups or your turners are level go in and pop any micro bubbles that you may have make sure that you're doing a thin coat of epoxy on the bottom of the cup and I've got my sanding block and my sandpaper and my knife. Um, those are all linked in the description. For me, on this specific tumbler, I'm only going to be sanding the flamingo um, peachy color of the tumbler. My white part laid very nice and very flat. And if I were not going to go in with a water slide, I would have sanded the whole cup. Make sure your bottom is sanded really nicely. It's going to, if you sand it nicely, it makes you from, it keeps you from having to add more epoxy, which makes your cup thicker and heavier. So go around the bottom, go around the top. I'm going around and making sure that my knife has, um, it's nice and sharp and just taking off any extra epoxy that got onto the rim of the cup. I love my sanding block for the top of it. It gives me just a tiny little bit of silver at the top so that my epoxy adheres to that. The smoother your cup, the less amount of epoxy that you're going to have to eventually put onto your cup. So keep that in mind for future reference. Anything that is smoother, it's, it's less amount of time that you're actually going to have to work on it. I've got acetone and I'm just cleaning out the inside of my cup. Um, getting rid of all the spray paint that's in there and I can tell if I have any epoxy drips in there after I remove the um, spray paint. You can do that at any point in time but I typically do it while I'm sanding my cup and then I will take it to the sink, go wash it with Dawn dish soap and we're going to start adding on our water slide now. So Sunny Scopa is the brand. It's an inkjet water slide in clear. I have it linked in the description. So my printer is an inkjet printer and I wanna make sure that whatever I buy will work with the printer that I'm actually using. So I've printed off two water slide um, of flamingos onto my water slide paper. Water slide paper is like a removable tattoos, kind of, in a way. I, I, that's how I describe it to people. It lets you transfer the image onto the cup, and if you have a white background, which is why I, I did white in the middle, you don't have to add any sort of white spray paint to the back of it. I know that I'm going to need two of these flamingos because of how light the color is. So I printed off two and I'm getting two of them ready. So I've got a nice warm, but not hot, not cold, um, bowl of water. You put a little bit of water onto your cup. Make sure your water slide slides off of your backing paper and then you just place it onto your cup. So with the spatula that I have here, um, I'm going to kind of just squeezy, squeegee out any of the excess water underneath. I'm trying to position my water slide the way I want it. So you want to make sure that you have all of the water and excess bubbles from out from underneath the water slide. So I'm just patting it dry here, making sure that all the bubbles are out and you can adjust the water slide. Um, before it dries but you have to do it kind of quickly or else you're gonna run the risk of having to print one over again I'm going to double layer it so you'll see me doing that here in a moment but with the water slides you have to seal the water slide at least three times with either clear glossy or matte spray paint I know people use other things but this is what works for me I use rust-oleum two times clear and I either grab matte or the glossy, it's just whatever I grab on hand. You need to spray it at least three times or your inkjet water slide ink off of the water slide, is, it's just gonna completely come off onto your cup and um, sealing it is key here. So let's get all the bubbles out. Oh, that's gonna be so cute, I love it. Now this will dry for about two to three hours or overnight preferably i think this one dried for me for about 45 minutes um i'm sorry for about a day for about 24 hours 
and I'm going in with my third coat of epoxy. The water slide really brightens everything up um, on any design that I've done, so they're really fun to use. It just gives you a little bit extra, uh, something a little bit extra. You could, you could print off words if you wanted to. You could do any sort of design that you can think of. They've got a white background and they have a clear background also. Make sure you do those thin strokes on the bottom of the cup. Get all the excess off. We don't need all that excess on the bottom. We don't want our cups to fall and crack. Right. Make sure you go in with your uh, torch and not your heat gun. We gotta pop all those bubbles. Make it nice and pretty. Now I think I did do a fourth coat of epoxy, which would be two coats on top of the water slide just um, in case there was any bubbles or any lint that may have been on there. So if you have any questions, please feel free to link them below. I would love to read comments and I reply to as many as I can. Thank you so much for watching this and I hope you have a wonderful day.